appliance repair talk for off the clock appliance repair text i'm your host with the most brother b and you can be anywhere in the world but you're here with me and i appreciate that ladies and gentlemen thank you for another episode of youtube's premiere off the clock talk tonight we have a recurring he's not even a guest no more at this point he's part of the family my brother hailing all the way from the wonderful state of new york known this guy for whew, longer than i care to share here to reveal my age but i'll say that we two brothers from the different mothers ladies and gentlemen if you don't know i'd like to introduce to you tonight guest uh uh show david oliva david please introduce yourself sir thank you for being here welcome man what's going on how you um, doing brother all right my bad how's your night going all right you know well Ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know who this young chap is, let me go ahead and give you a little bit of his background. My brother David Oliva in here, a high-end business owner out of the Long Island area of New York, multiple tech uh, company, ASTI uh, speaker, AUSA? What, what's the- uh, U UASA. Uh, you, you know the vibes. You know, close nah, enough. AUSA. <laughs> but those guys, uh on the board and uh over what 10 years doing this 15? in business 20 years 20? 20 years this year Woo! yeah yeah over 20 years so ladies and gentlemen in tonight's episode of uh shop talk i brought a guest with me brother david and i wanted to tap in with him he and i spoke at uh asti and um you know, on this channel, there's a lot of technical talk and there's a lot of, uh, you know, stuff about technical. And we do touch on business and we touch on this and that, but I want to touch a lot on business tonight. So I brought in my friend David, who I feel is overqualified in this subject matter. And David, you told me that you take me up on my offer and here we are. I we, did. We're gonna, we are going to uh, do a joint venture. But David, before we get into our joint venture, do you care to talk a little bit about yourself, man? How'd you get into this? Who are you? Come on. So, uh, like I said, I've been in business 20 years. It's a, a family-owned business. My my father's uncle started this business in 1963 out in, uh, in Queens. You know Queens. And, um, you know, my father worked with him for a long time. And then when he retired in 2002, uh, I came on. I worked with my dad uh, for a long time. About... Uh, Shit, about 10 years ago now, I started uh, running the business. And uh, from there, you know, we just started to change things up a bit. It was always uh, it was always real small, just, you know, just me and my dad or just him and his uncle. And, you know, we want to start hiring people. And that's what we did. And we made, uh, you know, a bunch of mistakes right off the bat. <laughs> so I guess what everybody does. But, you know, we learned from those mistakes and um, grew our business to where we're at today. And... Uh, we're doing really well we got you know we got some employees we got uh we got a new office we just uh we just opened up and, i've seen that right we got a nice, training center nice spot. yeah we got a training room uh yeah it's a good spot man, i wish you had pictures of that thing man so we can show the guys right? ah, yeah no nah, i don't have any any handy but uh you know we, we just did training i did uh, um i don't know if you saw that refrigeration setup i made to to train on basic refrigeration where did you post it at uh that was on linkedin ah it was on linkedin well ladies yeah. and gentlemen in case you don't know please go on over to linkedin and look up david oliva and make sure you uh you look for that uh refrigeration training that you put up so tell, tell me about it david so we set up uh i wanted to just teach you guys just the basics and as we go forward with training new hires i wanted to make sure we have the ability to train on uh just the fundamentals of everything so i set up a refrigeration system you know, just on a board so everything's out and open and they could see it i had two i had a regular compressor and an inverter compressor and uh you know showing the basics all the different components of a refrigerator how to test everything how to do some basic um you know uh, pressure measurements things like that to identify sealed system problems and then uh from there we'll, we'll do a sealed system training with lock, lock ring so uh, whoa now david how many how many walk me through this operation he was how many guys do you have Right now we got three techs. Uh, we're interviewing again on uh, Friday to hire uh, hire another one. We really need to bring on two more, 
but uh, you know, it's it's few and far between uh, as far as uh, meeting meeting our standards. So we've been training people from scratch. It's time consuming. They don't always work out, you know. So we we go uh, we go that route. But yeah, Friday we're we're uh, probably bringing on a new guy. He's coming in uh, to talk. I already met him. He's a he's a good guy. Uh, we got uh, two people in the office or three people in the office, and um, you know, it's a pretty pretty smooth running operation. Um, we bring uh, you know we get the techs come in. They pick up their parts. They go you know everything's organized so that everybody knows where to go. Uh, to get all the parts and they go out and, uh, you know, do their jobs. And the guys we got now, they're good, man. And, and we made a decision at the beginning of the year that we will not, uh, we will not keep anybody on. That's not just the best. Everybody we bring on going, going forward is going to be the best only. Uh, it's the only way we can, you know, keep up what we're doing here. Well, David, the reason I, I, I decided that uh, I wanted to reach out to you was because in case you don't know, David, which you know, but whoever's watching this that don't know, June 6th through June 10th, okay, it's, it's a five-day hands-on event that we're going to be holding in the South Florida area. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as a bonus to the attendees to are coming to the South Florida event, I want to announce that I decided to bring my brother David down there to give a two hour uh, intro to appliance repair business workshop. Is that correct, David? Yeah, yeah, gear, you know, gear towards uh, just run, you know, uh, the basics of running a, a small, you know, small operation with, you know, a couple guys, something like that. And just a uh, real, intro thing i say it's only two hours so you can't cover that much we hit all the basic points um you know a little bit of overview of the industry how it works and then uh little tips on how to um you know how to handle some stuff how to create uh we got know, a whole slot show, david. we got we got we everything got a whole slot show. Whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa. Mm -hmm. but david before we get into the slideshow of what you're going to be talking about business wise i do want to tell whoever's watching this what is our, our, our event about? Ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, in case you've been living under a rock here, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen with you. Uh, okay, where is this? Boom. Boom. And let's go. Boom. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in case you don't know, uh, we are hosting a intro to appliance repair class and as a courtesy and a bonus to the attendees, brother David is also given a workshop. Now, again, this is a ASTI guest speaker. This isn't some regular Joe Schmo I found on the, in the garbage can. They paid it. Well, I don't want to say that, but this guy, people, you know, they pay for the event just to see the, this is one of the guys that talk this. So, this guy's a somebody. So he's going to be out there on Wednesday, right? Wednesday night, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, Wednesday. Wednesday the now, 8th. David, this, this, when you come down here, this is what we're going to be talking about, David. It's going to be five days, right? First day, we're teaching the guys basic electricity, okay? And, David, in case you didn't see my uh, show on Friday, I was doing a basic challenge to the guys. And, and please, by all means, chime in. But uh, this this intro class is designed for the guy or gal that is getting into the industry. They don't really have a lot of knowledge, you know, like they just going out there and trying to figure it out on the fly. This is a, 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 a five day crash course on the intro to appliance repair. So, David, on Friday, I, 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 I made a challenge to the guys. And I was asking them online, like, I, I wanted to pick at their brains and I wanted to stir up insecurities to get them interested in this and say, man, you know, this is something I really need. So I started probing and asking questions and, you know, picking at their brains, if you will. So, you know, I was asking them questions like on this uh, on this unit here, you know, how uh, this compressor, how is it uh, this bimetal and this defrost heater over here? Are they wired in series, parallel? How would you check that bimetal? What's the purpose of it? 
you know, Ohm's Law. That was day one. Then day two, David, nice. uh, it was about washing machines, the, the, the basic functions of them, um, uh, the components, the purpose of the components, how to test them. And uh, that was day two. Now, day three is the day that you're going to be there. But we're mm -hmm. having dryer repair in the morning uh, to about four or five before you get there. We'll be talking about uh, dryers, gas, electric, different components. Again, how to test them, the purpose of them, um, you know, uh, stuff like that. So on Wednesday, that's when you're going to uh, uh, come over. Now, I'd like you to share your screen with me. And uh, if you don't mind, David, uh, yep. please tell us what are you going to come down here to South Florida and show us? What will you be talking about? Let me just bring this up. What do you think about the class, by the way? I love it, man. That's a great, that's a great, uh, great introduction to, to all the places. 650 is what I'm charging. Good. And look, send your guys down here, your family members. Can well, you see that? Down here. I know you taught me a thing or two, but you know, I stepped my game up. Maybe I can teach you a thing or two, you know? Come on down here. Now can I'm you saying, see can you see my screen? I can, but I'm I'm you ready for me to add it to the, yeah, yeah. To the chat? Yeah. Yep. Let's do it. Here we go. What am I looking at, David? So Is that's what you're gonna be talking about. Yeah, that's just the that's just the cover cover slide there. And I'm not gonna hit everything here because if you want to see it, you gotta come down and see it. Oh, of course, but, of course, you know. of course. We got so we got, we got some stuff, you know, some basic stats, a little bit of overview of the industry, like the size of the industry. Uh, you know, interesting point here. Eighty percent of this industry is uh, less less than four employees, and most of those are just single man operations. So this information really applies to, to that, you know, that kind of, that kind of size of. Well, uh, David, before you get to the slide, let's start at number one real quick. What, what are we looking at? Oh, there we go. What are we looking at that? What's that? Uh, let's, What's that's just the about? intro Tell slide. What, but like, this, what your workshop entails. If I'm a guy or girl traveling to South Florida, I'm going to go to Brother B's intro class. And holy cow, he's giving me uh Brother David as a bonus here. What am I going to be getting? All right, so so if you're going to if you're going to Brandon's uh you know uh, t you know the TMM intro class here, you're obviously getting uh, getting into the business. So aside from the technical stuff, uh, you know there's there's uh, there's a lot of stuff that goes uh, along with that on, on the business side, and a lot of that is you know unique to running a small company versus the way uh, you know a large company like Sears might operate, because it's not just you know you're doing everything when it's when it's a small business like that. Every single job in that company belongs to you. And you got to do all of them. So these are just some some of the ways you can uh, you can make that a little bit easier. Some of the challenges that you might run into, uh, you know, on, on that end, since you have to do everything. So that's 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 a general overview of what we're doing. And then, you know, uh, we, like I said, we start out with just a, a little bit of uh, overview of of the industry, go into some of the things like, uh, you know, how do you uh, you know, how do you balance your uh, your, your, you know, your business responsibility along with your, you know, your family, right? You want to go home and see the family, but you got, you know, you got to get home and it's six o'clock and now you got to order parts and, you know, what are the ways you can, you can handle, handle that kind of, you know, that kind of stress because it can be real stressful and it can, can stress your relationships. And it's, you know, it's, it's an important thing that people overlook when they're talking about uh, small business. Um, some of the other stuff is how, you know, how do you want to plan for growth? You know, if you plan on hiring people and stuff like that. So we got, um, we got an idea, you know, an, an idea like this, which I got from, you know, from Emit. This is not my original idea here, but how to create, uh, how to create an organizational chart so you can plan out how you want your business to grow. You know, you see here, we got at the top, uh, you know, the shareholders, which is the owner, right. And then you, you know, you just break it out. Now, when you look at it this way, it's like, well, what, what is all David, that? is there a way to make that bigger? Uh, go to yeah. the top right where it says zoom. There you go. Yeah. Little, there you go. 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 A little bit bigger. No, no, no. You, you had it. You see up there where it says yeah. zoom. Oh, there you go. Perfect. You now I can see. All so, right. I mean, now it's, you know, you look at something like this, you're like, well, you know, it's just me. What do you mean? What are, what are all these different things? But these are all of the things that you have to do within your company, right? So you're the president. You're the person in charge of operations. You're the person in charge of finance. You're the service manager, the office manager. You're the bookkeeper. So something like this is just saying, look, let's break out all of these different responsibilities you have and, and just create a chart and say, OK, so eventually I want to hire somebody 
down here to be a technician. So we're starting down here and say, all right, well, what does a technician do? And you write out a job description for what a technician does. Once you figure all that out and you have it laid out, now you can hire a technician and give them, you know, give them that. Now you want to hire a CSR. So all right, well, what does the CSR do? And you write up the job description for the CSR, all the responsibilities. Like so, basically, what you're doing is you're taking each position that you uh, you currently do and just you know fleshing it out so you have a real clear understanding of what needs to be done and when. That way, when you're ready to hire somebody, you you have it all laid out and you don't have to you know guess or uh, you know you know just wing it about about what needs to be done for each each individual each individual position there. And you know initially you're going to be the one doing most of these or you and one other person doing most of these. But as you, as you grow or as you plan for growth, you want to be able to, you know, to have a clear, uh, clear path forward. And this something like that really helps with that. Uh, what else we got here? Um, how to create, uh, you know, process charts, right? This is just a real basic thing here. This is, um, this is specific to, to our software here, but it says, you know, how to identify jobs that have been, uh, closed out, but not paid, you know, it's specific to what we're doing for our software, but you can do this with every kind of process. But the, and the point is to make something just real simple so that you can, you know, you can point somebody in the right directions and they say, Oh man, you know, you hired somebody to say, Oh man, I forgot how to do that thing. He's oh, here, here's just a basic, uh, you know, a basic step-by-step -step on how to do, how to do this particular process. And you can do this once, once you have that job description for that one position. Now you can do this, this process map for every single task within that job description. And that eventually you'll have a full book of how to do everything without you ha even having to be there. This is something that other people can refer to, you know, if, if they need to, uh, and you don't have to be around because ultimately maybe that's the goal you want to, you know, you want to step back and uh, do something else. And then uh, everybody else can, can still know what to do without you having to be there. Um, part two, that's the thing everybody really likes. We're talking about, pricing and how to figure out how to figure out your numbers now real quick uh i got this is something else that you're going to get if you're at the class created this um this calculator here i don't know i don't know if you could see that it's a little small can you see it a little bit blow it up a little bit more okay yeah. i see income right there you go so it's a real real quick thing and i'll give you a quick example so let's say everything here in the green and I, i'm going to share this file with anybody that's at the class anything here in the green you can fill in these fields so you start at the top, how much money you want to make a year. Let's say you call it $90,000. How many days you want to work, uh, you know, yeah, per week, five, how many hours, eight. So, and, and this is breaking down now. All right, you're working 40 hours per week. This means you make 43, 27 an hour and you go down, you fill, go through, and we can, you know, we'll go th through step by step how to do this, but, um, and you fill in vacation days, that, and that basically at the end of the day, what it's telling you here is this is how much you need to collect per completed job to make all of these things work. And you can change that up any way you want, change those numbers around. And that's going to tell you how much you need to charge based on what you're inputting on that. You know, I want to make this much money and work this many days a week. David, I can, I can give you a number right now. Right. And you plug it in and then everything will change. Right. All the yep. parameters will change. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. 125. All right. 125,000. So that means, you know, based on these other parameters here, your expenses are 50 grand a year. You want to make 20% profit and so on. We can adjust all of that. That's $185. You got to, you know, you got to collect uh, per, per job. Uh, that, and that's it. So, and the cool thing about this is it'll tell you, all right, that that's if you, you know, if you do eight jobs a day, but you really only complete five because you had to order parts and one was just a trip charge or something like that. And you can change that around and it shows you, you know, the better you get, the less you have to charge, but you can keep those rates the same. So that was that if you complete five jobs a day, let's say, let's say you're real good and you complete six out of eight per day, right? So that, that lowers your rate by how much you need to charge, how much it costs you to run the business. But if you, if you stick with that higher rate, that just means you're making more money now. So, you know, there, there's a lot of ways to, to do this, but this is just a real basic, simple calculator to help people figure it out, you know, figure that stuff out, which is, the most important thing you can do when you're, you know, when you're running a, a small business like that. Um, let's see here. You know, we can, we're going to have the discussion about how, how you can implement that pricing, how to put it across to the customers the right way. Uh, you know, how to make sure that the customers perceive uh, your value in the way you intend them to. And, you know, how to sort of control that perception. 
Uh, we'll talk about how to charge job rates versus hourly rates, uh, which is another big discussion in the industry. Uh, it's just another picture of the calculator there. Um, yeah, so there's there's a lot on pricing, which is some basic uh, financial terms. Stuff you know, just this, this this may look like it's too much, but it's real. It's real, just basic stuff like understanding the difference. No, no, no. Revenue whoa, and profit. Whoa, you know? whoa, whoa, hell no, that's not basic, man. Hell no, man. <laughs> Knowing your numbers is important, man. That it is. Yeah, is, is yeah. worth you know Absolutely. um attendance. Mm -hmm. But um, the fact that uh you taking all of this uh you know as easy, nah, man, not at all, man. Well, I'm not saying it's easy. But it's real. It's real intro stuff. It's not. It's not going to overwhelm people. You know what I mean? It's just. It's just basic stuff that you really need to know to get started. And then part part three. David, uh, before we go into part three, can we answer some questions? In oh the yeah, chat? yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, I want to answer Mr. O. Brother, Mr. O says, "How do you tap into the high end market? COD? Any any uh, advice there, brother? How you tap into the high end market? Um." You need to contact the manufacturers and just hound them until they give you that contract. It took me – the first one we got took, I think, two years of uh, emails every week until they finally got sick of hearing from me. But, you know, another way you could go is um, uh, appliance stores. If you got uh, appliance stores in your area that sell high-end product, go in, introduce yourself, say, hey, I'm so-and-so. Uh, we do appliance repair. Uh, here, here's our cards. We, we, you know, we specialize in this and this. But the only caveat to that is if you're doing that, you got to make sure you know what you're doing, you know, because if you're going into a high end store and they're going to recommend you, um, they want their customers to be satisfied by the company they recommend. So if, you know, if you can present, uh, if you can present yourself in a professional way and you come across like a confident, competent person, then they'll recommend you, or at least they'll give you a shot. And, uh, that's, that's another good way to get started. Those appliance stores, especially the good ones, they have a lot of pull, uh, with manufacturers and, um, just in the you know community in general. So getting in with appliance stores is a is a really good good way to start. Okay, and then I thank you, David, for that answer. And then I got one more from brother uh Charlie Simpson. Is this gonna be online? And if so when? Yes, it's gonna be that Wednesday. David, do you have the date of your arrival? Uh yeah, the eighth. It's uh, Wednesday the eighth. I'll be there the eighth to the tenth, I think. Yeah. I'm gonna write that in the comment section. Apologies, brother. I'm good. Wednesday, June 8th, right? Yep. All right. That answers your question, Charlie. Okay. All right. Uh, brother, take it away. What are we looking at? The future of applying service and the future of your small service company? There you go. You got it. Uh, uh, yeah. So, I'm like, what, what's, you know, what does it look like going forward, you know? You see, you see a lot of product uh, becoming less expensive, although that seems to be changing recently. We, just, we don't know if that's a long-term permanent trend, the reversal of uh, pricing. We look at something like, um, like this here. This is a chart I put together. Uh, it doesn't account for, for 2022, obviously. But what, what this trend shows you here is that uh, a pro an appliance sold in 1997 is effectively more expensive – uh, then it will, uh, let me rephrase that product sold in 2021 is effectively less expensive than something sold in 1997. Although the overall number, you know, the, the actual number on the price tag is higher when you compare it to things like median income, they're actually less expensive in general. And you can see there was a pretty steady downward trend there, and it's, it's on the upswing a little bit. Uh, you know, there's some factors in there that aren't permanent. You know, you look at like, uh, material shortages and, you know, COVID and all the shutdowns and stuff like that. So we don't know if that upswing is permanent or what, but we want to sort of get an idea of what might happen in the future. And I always like to talk about, uh, you know, television repair and compare it to that. Do you know any television repair companies? You know, like, so not really, right? There used to be a lot of them. So what, what can we do to sort of forecast what this industry might look like in 10 years and 20 years? And what can we do to make sure we're set up for that future, you know, uh, things, things you want to think about now before, uh, you know, before it's too late. And then you got to, you know, you got to scramble to get in on it. So we're going to try to look at, you know, trends in the industry and see, you know, see where we may be going in the future. So you can set yourself up before it happens. Um, what else we got here? Uh, we got, uh, 
uh, our favorite topic, um, lead generation. We'll we'll go into that a little bit. Uh, you know, we can have a couple of different um, David opinions on that. David. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt you, brother, but you're in the future of appliance repair. What about the the when you were telling me the beginning of appliance repair? How to choose the right zip code? How to look at your area? Uh, I, yeah. I don't want to like hack your speech here, but I got a feeling that you're way uh, underselling this thing. Uh, you also <laughs> were talking about how to choose desirable uh, uh, zip codes and, and how right. to go about that. Do, do you care to touch on that? Yeah. So here, I'll give you this, this little freebie here. You go to this uh, this website here, statisticalatlas.com. And what you can do with that is you can look at any, any zip code. You put it any, you can go uh, countrywide, statewide, citywide, county, whatever you want. It'll go down to within a couple of blocks. It uses census data, I think. And it'll tell you the median income uh, for, or, you know, among a whole bunch of other different uh, criteria, but you can choose median income. And you'll see on the map uh, of the area where the highest median incomes are. And that can help you choose uh, where, where you want to target your business. Because especially if you want to do high end, and you can't. You're not going to do high end service in uh, in an area of your city that has the lowest median income. So if you can see what areas you know are you know where where you want to work have the highest median income, that's where you can you know target your your marketing. And just a simple tool like that, statisticalatlas.com, give you a ton of information about about how to choose a place to you know to really do business. Um, that's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. It's really easy to use, and you. You can do things like uh, just see the, you know, the given population. The, the two things I look at are the population of an area or, you know, the number of households in an area and median income, because those two things would be a pretty good indicator of where you might be able to successfully uh, run a high end, you know, a high end repair service or any kind of repair service, really, or any kind of business in general, um, because the people uh, that have the most money are the people that are going to be buying the high end product. And that's, you know, if you're looking to do high end, that's where you want to, you know, that's where you want to go. David, man, you know, we, I know we got, uh, we're, we're half an hour into this and I know you don't got all night, but can I, can I have you just touch a little bit more on the first few slides? Cause they're really yeah, yeah. packed with good information. I, I'm not saying the part two, we'll leave the money as a, uh, incentive for them to come, but show me a little bit more about the intro, uh, the first slides. I feel like there's a lot of stuff you skipped. It's good. Yeah, I skipped. I skipped most of it. You got to come down and see it. Um, all right. So, I mean, here, th this is just an overview. You know, what what does the industry look like? Uh, these these business numbers, I don't think, are very accurate, but the percentages are accurate. In fact, they go across the industry. Uh, I mean, business as a whole. Most business, eighty percent of business in this country is small business with zero to four employees. And in fact, even that zero to four, probably 80 percent of that is one or two people. So, you know, the small business in general is really about small business. When you see when you're getting 500, you know, 500 plus uh, employees, it's basically nothing. Uh, even in the five to 19 category, it's still a pretty small percentage. So really what I like to focus on is uh, the majority of the industry, which is, you know, very, very small companies, uh, because that's that's number one. That's who needs the most help. And uh, number two, that's who most of the people are. Uh, what else we got here? So, you know, when we talked about things like challenges. So these are just bullet points that we that we'll discuss. But, you know, you're an owner, but you're also a full time tech. So you mean, you, you know, you're running service calls, you're going to training, you meet with the accountant, you call the cable company, say my Internet doesn't work. And you stay on hold for 45 minutes, you know, that kind of stuff. So how do you how do you balance all of that stuff and you know, figure out how to make that work without driving yourself crazy? So not things you really want to overlook if you want to build a successful business. Um, no, we discussed that already. Uh, some things that you need to do, you know, to, to help with that pressure and that stress. And this one, you really can't stress the most. There needs to be a certain amount of time where you're set aside time to work on the business as opposed to in the business. So, you know, you're day to day and you're ordering parts and you're being a tech. But if you don't set aside any time to, uh, you know, to focus on the big picture, uh, you're, you're not going to get anywhere. You're just going to be, you know, you're going to spin the wheels and you're never going to, you know, you're never going to be able to, to grow or to expand your business if that's what you want, or even to just improve it if you're not looking to expand it, to make it more efficient. 
you know, there's there's always a million reasons why you say I don't have any time to do that. But really, if you don't do it, you're not going to get anywhere. And ultimately, it may be the cause of your failure. So really making sure you have time to work on the business is, is just so important. And like I said, even if you don't want to grow, it's going to make you more money because you'll figure out ways to increase your revenue, you figure out ways to to increase your efficiency. And, uh, you know, that frees up personal time. Uh, like like Michael Gerber said, work on, your, work on your business rather than work in your business. Right. And, you know, as, as the owner and, you know, owner operator, you got to do both. But too, too often people forget or neglect to work on the business at all. And I get it, man. It's, you know, it's hard because you've got a million things to do, but it's, it's, it's got to be a priority to set aside, even if it's just a little bit of time to just set that side of time, you know, set that uh, time aside to say, I'm working on the business today. And we can discuss, you know, what that means and what that looks like, but you know, it's, it's a real important, real important thing to do. They tell it, they call that always put in our fires, always put in our fires, exactly. always chasing fires. Right. So you know what? Yes, yeah, so that's a good way to put it because instead of chasing fires around, you want to set aside time to set up the sprinkler system so you're already ready before it happens. You know what I mean? So uh, what else here? Some of the, I'm calling this non-negotiable. Every every new guy that starts out, you know, I tell him you really need to hire somebody to answer the phones. And everybody says, I can't afford that. And it's just not true. And we can talk about, you know, why that is. Uh, but it just, it makes you better. It makes your company better. And what it costs you will you will be returned to you uh, in a much greater number uh, just just by having somebody on the phone because you know you answering that phone and I used to do it answer the phone in the middle of a job now now what happens you're you're not paying attention to the person on the phone you're not paying attention to the customer in the house and both of those things you're doing are just kind of half assed so you really need to you know and we can talk about you know strategies to make sure you can pay for that um, you know because it it is an expense. But it's not uh, it's not an expense that's not worthwhile. Uh, what else we got here? David, there's yeah. an age old question that floats around that says, I hear it all the time from guys. Should I get first a tech or first a CSR? It's a good question, question sir. Uh, CSR, I think. Um, because one of my biggest concerns with hiring a uh, first uh, tech as an employee was, am I going to have enough work for this guy? You know, cause you, you know, think about, think about what it means to, to give someone a job. You're taking that responsibility. They, they may have another job already that they're leaving and they're going to quit that job because you told them you're going to pay them a certain amount of money. Now you better make sure you're able to do that. Right. Because you don't want, you don't want to put somebody in that position. Uh, it's a lot of responsibility. So when you're saying hiring a CSR first, Hiring the CSR almost guarantees that you're going to increase uh, the number of calls on your schedule because you miss j just by not answering the phone or trying to answer on jobs. You're missing a ton of a ton of work coming in. And uh, the first the first time we hired uh, somebody to answer the phones, our workload almost doubled within a matter of weeks just because we were missing so many calls. We didn't even know it. Uh, so it's, it's real important. So to answer that question, I would say, yeah, CSR is definitely, definitely first. And it also, and going back to working on the business, having a CSR frees up more time to work on the business because that's just one less thing you have to do. Now, David, for the attendee that's going to come down here and see this thing, you you said, because this is an age-old uh, 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 statement that I hear a lot too. I can't afford it. I'm slow. What happens mm -hmm. if this? What happens if I? What you're saying is, you're going to provide the solutions on how to get around that. Right. So we had that calculator earlier, right? So a customer service rep is an expense. So you're going to plug in that and say, all right, I'm going to pay them bucks an hour or whatever it is you're going to pay them. Now you're going to figure out that's 800 bucks a week. That's such and such a year. And you're going to plug that in as part of your expenses. And now you're going to pop out with a new number at the bottom. Oh, okay. That means I need to charge X amount of dollars in order to pay for that expense. It's like, it's, it's, like, it's just dead simple. And on in that in that regard, figuring out you know how much you need to charge in order to cover those expenses. If you're doing okay. something like uh, another way is if you're doing something like a like a job rate system, like say you're using Blue Book currently, and you want to pay somebody uh, again, you want to pay somebody twenty bucks an hour, and you do uh, you know five jobs a day, or whatever. 
So, you know, you can just say, all right, well, I need to cover eight hours at this much dollar. So I need to increase each job rate by $5 or $10 or whatever it is to make up that difference. There's, there's a lot of ways to go about it, but they're, they're not that complicated. It's just, it's just knowing how to do it. Okay, David, thank you. Thank you for the answer. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're good. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, you know, uh, I don't want to give too much away here. But there's no, a lot. No, no, no. Tell, tell me now, if you may, about the last one. You would talk. What was, what was the final one? I know uh, part two was numbers and pricing. Yeah, but, just okay, the future. Like three. I said, we we kind of already covered that. Just you know what it might look like going forward. Uh, you know what what manufacturers have uh, have planned for the future and how you can you know how you can deal with that. Now, obviously, I don't really have the answer to that question. It's that's more of a, a discussion to have about what might happen going forward based on what's happening now. But it's just it's just something to to get your mind going to think about, you know, how you want to strategize going forward. And I know that seems, you know, it might seem a little far fetched for somebody just starting out. But if, if you think about that now, that's just, you know, one less stressor you have to deal with as you go forward because you've already sort of, uh, you know, put that idea in your head. I need to plan for this or I need to plan for that. And starting out with a solid plan is just real important. Brother Blake, yes, there will be a uh, a uh, a uh, virtual option for that. Forgive me as I create the link. I'm going to take this out. I'll send you my email. If you're interested, email me. If not, go on over to TMM Academics and uh, tomorrow you'll see the link. I can't do it now. I'm live. There, we got to do a virtual. Yep. Okay. Um, you didn't finish the future, David. Where are we at in life? <laughs> well, again, it's so the, the the future part. We're gonna, you know, we'll cover those trends, things like that. We'll discuss. Uh, and you your know. business, the future of your small. Right, the future of your business. business, things like you know, what do you want? What do you want out of your business long term? One of the things that that uh, that I learned in uh, in a business course I attended was the first the first thing that we did before we d talked about business at all was what do you want out of your life? What are your personal goals, right? Because if you can define your personal goals, then you can try to mold your business to fit those personal goals. You say, you know, I want to retire by the time I turn forty. Or, you know, 45, that's a pretty ambitious goal, but you know, Hey, why not? Right. But if, if you know what you want out of your life, then you mold your business to fit your life as opposed to trying to fit your life into some hectic business. So you can sort of look at it in the other way. And, you know, David, will you, will you be touching on uh, processes and systems? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, we, we went over that for a second. Uh, just how to create, uh, you know, the, the process manuals, the process charts, um, to, to lay out all of the different procedures that each employee in the company has to do that way. Number one, it's standardized. So somebody can't come and say, uh, well, you never told me to do this. You never told me to do that. And you can say, well, you know, here, here's the process manual. And we did, you know, we did discuss this and this is how it's done, you know, and going forward, you have something to refer to and that way it's consistent or allegedly theoretically consistent based on, you know, however, however good your employees are, but it's consistent across the board so that everybody is um, able to do the job in the same way so that one person doesn't, you know, let's say, you know, you got two CSRs, right? You're growing, you got two or three CSRs. You don't want one person answering the phone saying one thing, somebody else says something else and somebody else says something different. You want everybody to be on the same page. So it's important to, to lay all that stuff out ahead of time. So everybody knows this is how we do it. So it's not just haphazard. The, the 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 idea is nothing happens by accident everything is thought out and and taught to the people who are working in your company this is how we do it we don't leave it up to them now obviously there's some room for personalization and things like that but in general the core functions of the business need to be laid out ahead of time by you or whoever you put in charge of that so that it's consistent across the board and david when you go to McDonald's in New York, the Big Mac tastes just like the Big Mac in Wichita, Kansas, correct? Exactly. That's right. And and why is that, right? It's because McDonald's probably has a book this big 
about how to do every single little thing. And probably, it's not really a book anymore. I assume it's all online, but you know what I mean? They have those processes laid out. David, um, Michael Gerber refers to, um, he's, I'm going to misquote him, but I'm going to do my best to paraphrase it as best as I could remember. But he says that like, employees want to understand their role in the uh, business. Right. And, and, what they do, how it correlates to the overall picture of it. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing that about processes and systems is that um, it removes the ego right. and it removes like uh, the know-it-alls and so forth. Mm -hmm. Because uh, like you say, uh, one guy may pack the box this way, one guy may pack it that way, but there needs to be only one way and that's yeah. your way. But and Unless and so you, you take the time to work on it, like you said earlier, right? That's where that uh, working on the business comes in. And, and it's you know, it's not even just that. You ever had a job? Like I know I've had jobs as a kid where they hire you and they're like, "All right, go go do it," and nobody explains how to do it. You have nothing to refer to, and then you get in trouble because you didn't do it right. You know, you want to avoid those situations. If you hire somebody, there's an expectation uh, that they're going to be trained and they're going to be shown how to do something correctly uh, because it shouldn't be on the new hire to figure out how to do it you know, they have to be trained and it's it's also about creating uh you know a you know i like say a, like a good company culture right because you know we this is the way we do things and we expect you to learn the way we do things but we don't expect you to just figure it out on your own you know everything has to be uh detailed for you david can i pick at your brain a little now sure before we get off i know you're about to leave now but can i pick at your brain yeah man how do you do, do, do what's are you in favor of w uh nines or are you in favor w2. of uh w2s uh you talk about a contract like 1099 versus w2s um i mean there, there's a place for contractors i think uh depending on the business but my personal opinion is a w2 employee uh is, is the way to go uh because you know with with certain exceptions if you're if you're using subcontractors and you're doing it legally, you're, there's so many things you're not allowed to tell them how to do that you don't have any quality control. Unless you know that that subcontractor is, is a, um, you know, a really a high quality professional, uh, you, you're, really, you're really giving away quality control. Now, what happens a lot is people will put somebody on as a 1099 subcontractor, but treat them as a W-2 employee. And ultimately all that does is put a huge liability on the employer because now you're going to have the IRS on your back if something goes wrong and you're going to end up paying back taxes for all of those years you weren't paying them, which could be 10, 15. They'll go back forever and they'll get all of it. Um, and if you're doing it legally, like I said, it, a director is supposed to be somebody who operates their own business that you pay to do jobs now and then. But if you think you're going to bring on uh, somebody and do them as a 1099 and not have to pay any benefits, any payroll tax or anything like that, but you're still going to tell them what to do and make them wear your uniform, that's not that's not legal. And people do it all the time. But again, the biggest issue with that is if you get audited or you just get called out for some reason, you're going to have a really hard time because they're going to go they're going to go back as far as they can go, and you're going to owe all of that money plus fines. So. You know, there, there is a place for subcontractors, but I think if you're trying to build uh, a quality business long term, my personal opinion is a W-2 employee is the is the correct way to do it. Do, do you pay? Do you are you a proponent of uh, per hour or are you a proponent of uh, your guys? That is the guys you employ. Yeah, we, or, we pay uh, per job. Commission? We pay commission. You know, we well, it's sort of a mix. We have a, a base hourly rate. Um, we pay overtime, uh, but the hourly rate is like a fallback. Like if it's just real slow or something, you fall back on the hourly rate. Everybody makes more on commission, but we, we so we have a, a mix of it. But um, yeah, we just we do commission for the most part with that with that fallback hourly rate. And you provide them the trucks. We provide everything. If it, uh, that's the thing, so if if you're if you're calling somebody an employee, you well, I mean, you can you can have them use their own car and reimburse them for that. But yeah, we, we provide the trucks, the, the cell phones, the tablets, the shirts, uh, just everything, uh, the specialty tools, basic hand tools or, you know, things that are 
technicians are required to have on their own. We'll help them buy that when they start if they need that help. But uh, yeah, we provide uh, everything across the board. And again, that all goes to quality control, right? Because if you're hiring an employee, you're trying to build a business that does high end stuff. You say you got to use your own car. You can't control what kind of car they have. Maybe they're rolling up in some old beat up car. Right. That's a, what kind of image is that that you're going to present to somebody charging these, you know, charging these uh, professional quality rates. And, uh, you know, they're pulling up in, in a beat up car with no sign on it. You want it to come up in your truck with your nice sign or your nice wrap. So you, you're controlling uh, that perception of your business. David, you mind telling me if you ever made over a million? <laughs> You know, we do we do all right. Uh, personally, not not me personally. Uh, business wise, uh, yeah, we have sure with uh, with Vortex. You know, a, a bit over that too, not not just a little. You gonna come down here and give us some of that game, huh? I'm gonna try. I can I could use some uh, warm weather right about now, so you know. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there y'all have it. Listen, uh, when is it? Wednesday, June eighth. Come on down to the South Florida area, tap in. Well, you need to come June 6th to the June 10th and learn how to fix these things. Right, that's the first before step. Before you decide that you want to start learning zip codes and this and that, and you end up in front of a gag and all that, that, that's flashing uh, AE03 <laughs> and, and German schematics. <laughs> and, you, and you're like, what the hell do I do right. here now? Yeah. So you better come on down, like I said, uh, June 6th to June 10th, uh, basic intro to appliance repair class. And as a bonus, if you come down, we are going to uh, give you free access to Brother David's and I's workshop. Go ahead and show the, uh, the, 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 the main, the, the, the thumbnail. That's on Wednesday, June 8th. Okay, and if you don't attend, there will be a virtual uh, access for you. Go ahead and email me. And again, this is for uh, Brother David and I's joint collaboration. Yep. Running a small service company. Presented by David Oliva, RD Appliance Service Corp. All right. In conjunction with TMM Academics. Ah, uh, you know the vibes. So, David, uh, I look forward to seeing you out here in the South Florida area, man. Yeah, man. I'm looking forward to it. I can't wait. Appreciate it, bro. Well, there you have it, ladies. Oh, anything you want to say? No, that's it. Except sign up, sign up for the full for the full week, and then uh, you get this. Also, for free. And then if you can't, uh, email me. We'll create a, a link for you. We'll do a virtual. Uh, I got to I gotta go online and, and add that uh, as well for you to RSVP that event. David, thank you for being here, bro. And Absolutely. there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. YouTube's premiere off-the-clock appliance repair talk for off-the-clock appliance repair text. I'm your host with the most and brother David. Uh, for another episode of Shop Talk, we thank you for being here. Love, peace, and harmony. David, tell us goodbye. See you guys in Florida.